Hello, in this quick video, we're going to discuss a very specific group of non-zero rationals. So we're going to specifically look at this group here. So our set is Q, this is the set of rational numbers, and the operation is going to be multiplication. So if you take uh, the set of non-zero rationals, so Q with a little star, and uh, the operation of multiplication, this forms a group. Given any two non-zero rationals, if you multiply them, you get a non-zero rational, so it, the set is closed under multiplication. Um, it's associative, there is an identity element, and there is the existence of inverses, thanks to the fact that we're excluding zero, um, that gives us all of the inverses we need. Uh, basically every element has an inverse and so we're able to create um, this group. If you remove the notion of non-zero, um, there would be a problem, right? Because you wouldn't be able to find an inverse for zero. So what does this set look like? Let's just write it down just so you see. Um, let's just try to write it down using um, set builder notation. So we can maybe write it like this. It's all the fractions A over B such that, and then here A and B are integers, so A, B are elements in the set of integers, and then you have to say some other stuff. So first of all, um, you want it to be a rational number, so B can't be zero, so B uh, is not zero, and also uh, A can't be zero, because if A is zero, the whole fraction is zero, then you have zero as a rational, so A is also uh, not zero. So this would be one way to write down um, the set of non-zero rationals. And so the operation here is multiplication, right? So like if you take uh, a rational number, like let's say A over B, and you multiply it, so times another rational number, C over D, this is how multiplication takes place in this group. So it's good to understand stuff like this. You know, how do you, how do you, how do you perform the operation on two members of this group? So basically you just multiply these fractions, right? So A times C is just AC, it's really simple and then over, and then b times d is bd, and that's how you perform um, the group operation in this in this group. And different groups have different operations. And by the way, this is a rational number, right? And you can check, uh, b, you know, here b is not zero and d is not zero, therefore the product bd is not zero. So this is indeed a rational number. Also, uh, a is not zero and c is not zero, therefore this product uh, is uh, also non-zero. So AC is non-zero and BD is non-zero. Therefore, this is an element uh, in this set. So that shows it's closed under the, the operation of multiplication. So important to acknowledge that, um, you know, when you, when you take two elements from this set, what does it mean to be in this set? Well, it means that this is non-zero and this is non-zero. Uh, I said it in words, but I didn't write it. But again, in, in both fractions, right, nothing here is zero, right? Because if you look at A over B, A is not zero and B is not zero. So A is not zero, B is not zero, C is not zero, D is not zero. So therefore, the products are also not zero. And so all is good. In order for it to be a group, it has to be associative. So let me just briefly uh, write down what that would mean in, in this particular case. And I'm, I'm going to avoid the cumbersome notation of fractions. So I'm just going to write it like this for all let's just call them X, Y, Z. We, we know that they can be expressed as fractions in the form A over B, uh, you know, where A and B are integers and neither are zero. So for all X, Y, Z in uh, this set here of non-zero rationals, we have, and then we have this, this property, it's called the associative property. So if you have X times Y, and then you multiply it by Z, that's the same thing as doing X times y times z. So uh, the order uh, should should not matter. Uh, what else? We have the identity element. The identity element here is going to be uh, 1. E is equal to 1, right? That's going to be the identity element. So there exists E in this, this set here of non-zero rationals such that uh, for for all x in this set, we have e plus x, or not plus, sorry, uh, times, we're looking at multiplication here, e times x equals x, and x times e 
equals x. And for our purposes, this is going to be the number one. One is a rational number, right? You can write it as, you know, one over one or five over five, etc. And it would satisfy the conditions of this set. It would be in, in this set. So it is an element uh, in the set of non-zero rationals. So that shows its existence. Uh, that's why I'm emphasizing that. And then for all x, it's pretty easy to see if, you, if you're given a rational number and you multiply it by one, um, you're just going to get the same number, right? You're going to get uh, a over b. And the last condition is uh, the existence of inverses. And this is the reason that zero is excluded, right? This is the reason it's excluded. So let's go ahead and write that condition down. So uh, that condition reads as follows. So for every, I'll use the word every this time, for every uh, y, now let's just use x. For every x in our set here, q star, um, there exists uh, a y in q star such that uh, if you if you look at uh, x times y, you're going to get e. Likewise, y times x, you're going to get e. So you have an inverse element. Okay, you have an inverse element uh, for every element there, and and we can explicitly find it. Uh, let's let's do that because we know what elements of Q star look like, right? So um, so you know if if you were to just say take any x in Q star, then what does that mean? Then x can be written as a fraction in the form a over b where a and b are in the set of non-zero integers. So the star means non-zero, so boom. Um, so these are not zero, a and b are not zero. So then, b over a is also, is also in q star because, you know, b is not zero and a is not zero, right? So it's an element, that's, that, that's what it means uh, to be in Q star, right? They're integers and they're non-zero, right? So both the numerator and denominator are non-zero. So it's certainly an element in that set. So we th that's the existence part right there. So we've shown that. We've explained that. And so now, then, and so, let's do the multiplication, right? So if we do, if we do x times y, so a over b, times b over a, what happens? Well, you, using ordinary rules of multiplication, we know these cancel, right? You just, you just get one. Same thing, right? b over a times a over b is just going to give you one, right? So uh, there's our inverse. <laughs> so that's how you can do it. So it is a, uh, a group, right? It's associative. Uh, it has an identity element, and every element has an inverse. And you can see how it would be a problem if we allowed zero because... You know, if you get, you know, x equals, let's say, 0, which is 0 over 1, well, what's the inverse? 1 over 0? That is, you can't divide by 0, right? So it won't work. So that's why we had to throw away 0 uh, for this to be a group. So, well, hopefully, if you're watching this, uh, you've learned some mathematics. Take care.